Welcome back guys and today we are going to be jumping back into SnowRunner to check out a brand new rig by Old Drifter. Now this is his Ford F100 and as you can see it's not exactly what you'd call stock. Now there's a lot that's been done to this truck behind the scenes but I do want to go ahead and let you guys know right off the bat that because this truck is fully branded um, this particular version of it is not console friendly and that's also because there are a lot of there are a lot of texture aspects and add-on aspects of this truck that push it above the console friendly limits although I will say it's been kind of unclear whether or not he plans to do a console friendly version of this truck but only time will tell in that respect now with that being said this truck is a custom made dually setup and a much longer bed than you would find on I shouldn't say all factory F100s but most factory F100s now there are a lot of different elements to the suspensions and the engines in terms of customization and in just a moment we're gonna go ahead and head into the garage and see what all we can do with this thing. Now, let's also take a quick look at the interior. You can see that we have the bubble dar up there on the dash. And actually, what's interesting about this thing as well is... Oh, dude, look at the mirror detail. The mirror detail looks so good. And then, like, the seat textures, the door handles, the glove box, everything. But you can actually move the interior camera around a lot. Look how far forward you can look. You can basically look all the way up on top of the dash, which is really, really cool. All right, let's go ahead and head inside the garage and see what we can do with this thing in terms of customization. Now, first off, we've got stock. Then we've got the stage one tune. Then we've got the stage two tune. And just so you guys can see what I'm talking about when I say there's a fairly noticeable difference between the two, when we have the stage one engine in this thing, Here's what the power is going to look like. It's not necessarily, like, all that fast, but it can still get up and go out of its own way. So let's see. That's going to be your starting engine tune, which is pretty dang quick, and it's actually helped out a lot by the fact that you can run a 12-speed transmission. The 12-speed transmission is probably my personal favorite out of all the transmission options in this truck because it does give you that much, basically that much versatility in the speeds the truck can go. Now, this is going to be your stage one tune, which as you can see, it'll get up to speed a little bit quicker, but it's not necessarily going to be, you know, an engine that will rip a hole in the space-time continuum. So let's see. Whoa! It will actually kick the back end out, though. That's sick. All right, let's roll on the power, kick the clutch. It'll skip right from 4th to 8th to 11th, whereas with the base engine, it'll go, you know, 4th, 5th, 6th. With this one, the Stage 1 tune, it doesn't even use them. It's just like, yep, we're on our way. Holy crap, that's properly fast, actually, with the Stage 1 tune. Now with the Stage 2 tune, he says it's a tiny bit OP, but still fun. I wonder what he means by a tiny bit OP. We're about to find out, I suppose. All right, let's make our way back out onto the main road, and... I'm gonna launch this thing. Let's see what she can do, and... Go! There's 5th, 9th, 11th. Oh my god, it's... Dude, when you give her the beans, it's like... It's nuts! I can barely keep this version of it on the road. Sheesh! That's wild. I will say it makes it a lot more controllable on pavement if you turn the all-wheel drive off until that happens and you get into a little bit of a tank slapper and then you're, uh, well, you're oofed at that point. But this thing is legit, and I actually love how progressively the power builds with each engine option. Now, we're leaving the 12-speed gearbox in there. It's honestly, in my opinion, the best one to go with, unless you want to go with the 8-speed off-road because that one is a little bit more tuned for, like, really low-speed crawling scenarios. Now, suspension-wise, we got the raised off-road setup, we've got the stock setup, and we've got the towing setup. Now, the towing setup is going to be sort of your work setup. That one's going to be really good for hauling trailers, hauling other vehicles, things like that. The stock setup is going to be what's going to come with that slammed show truck height. But as you can see when we leave the garage, I know we're going in and out of the garage a lot, but trust me, it's worth it. When you actually activate the active suspension on the stock setup, you'll see that it goes up to more of what would be considered a driving height. So let's go back into the garage and mess with a couple more things. I do want to see what the flex is like, though. Now, you have some default wheels and tires that you can run. You have the 32-inch and 35-inch kind of show setup. Then, you also have some default off-road wheels and tires. And then, down in, in the mud tire options, you have some dually swampers, which are very interesting in terms of a setup because they're super narrow. Then, you also have chained tires for if you're going to be hanging out in, like, a snowy, icy area. 
Then you've got your engageable diff lock, your worn Zeon winch, and then you can also go with a snorkel, although I've opted to not do one on this build because I'm kind of back and forth on whether or not I actually like the way they look on this truck. Now, you do have a gooseneck hitch as an option. You've got optional rear lights that actually say Ford in the taillights. You've got a custom flatbed that can actually use, uh, or, I, or I should say, it can carry one slot of cargo, which is really convenient. Small sideboard bed, pickup bed, saddle low, and tow bed. Now, the tow bed is actually really cool because I'm going to actually switch over to the towing setup because look at this. Look at this. If you have ever wanted to have a F100 tow truck with, like, show truck wheels in SnowRunner. I mean, here you go. And actually, whoa! The beacons are rotating inside the light bar. Dude, that is the coolest freaking thing. They're, they're not lit up, but they do rotate and they are animated. That is amazing! I love that. I absolutely freaking love that. That's so good! All right, let me throw the pickup bed back on it. And we're going to now do, let's see, I think I'm going to do the raised off-road setup just because I want to see how it does. You can do the side steps if you want to. Let's see, we've got a stock rear bumper we can throw on there. I don't really, I don't really care for the, the rear bumper. I mean, I'm kind of back and forth about it. And then, let's see, pipe brush guard. I'm just honestly like, wait, you could take the hood off? Wait a minute. Oh, never mind. You can't take the hood off. So you can either do Alcoa wheels or you can do Forgiatos. I'm going to leave the Forgiatos on there for now. I really like this chrome gold, but you can go through all of the colors and pick any level of chrome that you want. There's like a chrome red, chrome orange, that's almost like a burnt orange, that's really, really cool. Chrome green, no matter what, like, shade of chrome you like, this truck basically offers all of them. And of course, it's compatible with pretty much all of the modified uh, bobblehead add-ons. So before we do anything else... I want to see how much flex this thing has with the off-road suspension. What the heck? Bruh. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to turn the all-wheel drive on, but the truck was just like, yeah, no, you're going back into the garage. You're not turning your all-wheel drive on. The heck you think this is? All right, let's bring you up here to the flex ramp and see what kind of flex we can get out of it. I'm really hoping we can get a lot because it would be really cool to be able to flex out a show truck like this to, you know, to the level of a, of a Jeep or something. Oh. My. God. Bro. That flex is ridiculous. That flex is silly. I'm absolutely astonished by the level of flex that this thing has. I kind of want to take it for a short little rip down a rock crawling trail. Literally because of that. Like, because of no other reason than the fact that I really want to see how this suspension actually performs in the rocks because after testing it on the flex ramp I would have to be I would have to be completely nuts to not take it down a rock crawling trail considering the fact that there's literally one right here all right lockers on let's run it in low range I love how uh, I'm gonna turn the lockers off they're already starting to overheat on me trying to avoid uh locker overheating problems now, I will tell you in advance, we're probably going to bang up the bumpers a lot, bang up the bodywork a lot doing this. I mean, these trails are extremely tight, and they're basically designed for rigs that have uh, armor, essentially. And when I say armor, I mean like, you know, body protection and things like rock sliders and bumpers and basically everything you would want on a rock crawler. This is not designed to be a rock crawler in the visual sense. But in the suspension sense, it can be as much of a rock crawler as you would like. It really... Wow. I'm blown away by the amount of flex this thing actually has. I mean, I was not expecting it to flex out like that. Especially not that much. I mean, it really is tremendous in terms of the amount of flex that this thing can give you. And actually, the body is not as banged up as I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to do the first little bit of that trail and it was going to be completely ruined. But it's actually not. It's a lot better than I thought. Trying to ease away from the cab corners because the cab corners, I'm like, I, I almost feel bad about damaging the cab corners because they look so good. Woo, easy. I will say, though, that, like, custom dually rear end looks amazing. Whoa, I should be in standard low, not low plus through here. Being in standard low, or, yeah, being in standard low is a much better idea. Well, there you go, there you go, there you go. Oh, easy. See, once again, it is not difficult to get full-fledged suspension uh, down travel out of this thing. 
Only thing is, approach angle can sometimes be an issue. And that's, like, solely because of the fact that that front bumper... I, I shouldn't even say front bumper, but, like, the front fascia just hangs out so far ahead of the front wheels. It's like, it's gonna happen from time to time. Still doesn't stop it from literally being a pretty dang impressive player in the rock crawling space, though. Oh, ow. I don't know where I picked up that much damage from. I was going slow. I was just working my way over some rocks. And it was like, yeah, no, you're, uh, you're done. But, well, not you're done, but here's a bunch of damage for you. But, like, seriously? I'm, uh, once again, so blown away by the level of, level of tuning this thing has. Now, I'm gonna go back to the stock setup. Because there's one more thing that I really, really, really want to test. Especially considering the fact that we have... The, uh, that we have the fastest transmission option and the fastest engine option installed. We're going to go to the racetrack and we're going to see if this thing can actually handle itself around a racetrack or if it's like, no. Now, I'm running it right now on the stock suspension in high mode, but I'm thinking it might bottom out a little bit too easily. Now, thankfully, I do have the dev tools, so if we get over here and I want to switch it out to the towing suspension, which has a lot better... I shouldn't say a lot better damping, but... It's going to be a lot stiffer damping, especially in terms of compression. And on a big track like this, especially in some of the compression-heavy sections, you need that compression resistance in order for it to uh, to be able to maintain its speed. And actually, due to that bottom out right there, I'm going to go ahead and go for the towing setup. Is it just active rear? Okay, yeah, it's just active rear. That's fine. I was hoping it would be active front and rear so I could get a little bit more lift out of it, but it's all good. It wasn't directly designed to be a race truck. I just like using trucks for things that they weren't intended for. Now, let me know in the comment section down below if you guys would like to see me do anything very specific with this particular rig because I love this truck. I, I think it's a beast, and I love the way it looks as well. All right, let's go ahead and repair and refuel and send it. Let's see if we can get a gold on this lap. I don't know if we can, but it's certainly going to be a fun challenge to see what we can do. Bro, it rampaged its way right down that hill. Mad respect for that, though. Back into 10th or 9th or 8th. Wow, it literally just keeps going down and down and down. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Thank you. It really wanted to understeer off there, didn't it? Come on, stop with the sliding back and forth. I don't think we're getting a gold this lap. I really don't. Come on, up you go, up you go, up you go. Yep, high range is going to be faster through there, for sure. There's 11th, and let me see if I can hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm not touching the clutch. I'm not touching anything. And back down and over the other side. Let's get it. All right, bringing it around. The handling, though. That handling is, like, mad good. Oh, no. And that's why you don't always want long front overhangs on a racetrack. Because if the front end touches the ground, you will literally basically somersault your truck, and that will be it for your gold lap time. You are not going to be in the running for a gold lap time after that. It's just, it's just not going to be a thing. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that the rest of the lap can't be an absolute blast to do, but you will have to, uh, you will have to think about it for a moment, I will say. All right, up and over. No! Okay. Yeah, it's certainly not a pre-runner, but until it bottoms out, it handles a lot better than you would expect it to. Until it bottoms out, of course. Then once it bottoms out and, like, digs the front bumper into the ground, then you're like, oh, right, this isn't a race truck. Well, let's go. Whoa! That, wow, actually, that slide was so good. It was quick, like, it snapped into its angle really fast, but, like, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't, ooh, that it wasn't controllable. Do I have a flat in the front? I might. I really don't know. I might have a flat in the front. Oh, oh, God. Oh, it started walking around a whole bunch on me. Let's, let's not. And say we did, or not. All right, wow, sheesh. All right. It just wanted to completely spin out on me there. Even with the proper amount of counter steer, it was like, yeah, no, we're done. See ya. Gotta be careful here. As long as you can keep the front end, like, in the air. Oh, wow, yeah, 237. Definitely not my finest lap time ever, but I will tell you, 
It was properly fun. A lot more fun, in fact, than I thought it was going to be. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this truck in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later, and hope you guys enjoyed.